um, and I'm happy to sort of dive in just for a few minutes and talk about race and why it matters in myeloma care and survival, why we've created the Empower program. And I'm going to talk more about the Empower program after our break. You know, the IMF for 32 years is committed to every single patient and their care partner and their family and their community. Uh, for 30 years, we've been doing that all over the world. Um, but uh, as my daughter likes to say, um, every house on our street matters, Dad, but when one's on fire, we need to pay more attention to it. And so there is a house on fire here, um, and, and it is uh, within the African-American community. Um, as we're going to show you, Black patients have a greater risk of myeloma and inferior survival with myeloma. And so I want to just highlight to you a few sort of key facts around that. Um, I got to list them in 10 simple facts. Um, well, this is not a late show where we're doing a top 10 list, but I'm going to give you Dr. Joe's top 10, uh, I think, facts that we, we find very important in myeloma. The first is myeloma is the most common blood cancer in African Americans. We've just finished Blood Cancer Awareness Month for the month of September, and the incidence is growing. So right now, African Americans may constitute about 14% of the uh, the country, but but about 20 percent, as I'll show you in a moment, of all myeloma patients, and that incidence is actually growing. And we expect within the 10 years to, to that be up to literally um, a one in a one in uh, four patients. Myeloma is twice as common in patients of African American descent. I'm of African American descent, um, and so I know this applies to me, but it applies to so many others. Uh, we're still trying to understand the nature of this, but we know uh, that the sheer incidence of this disease is twice as high when we compare to white Americans. So this is why it's particularly important within the African American and black community. Not only so, African Americans are typically diagnosed at a younger age. So the average age overall is somewhere around 70, 69 to 70, um, but it's much younger in the Hispanic and Latinx population, about 65 and about 66 within uh, the African American population. Um, and so this, this is another differentiating feature of the disease. Um, as I mentioned, uh, African Americans uh, comprise about 20% of all patients with myeloma. Um, so that means one in five patients in this country uh, are black. Uh, or of African-American descent. And we know those two phrases aren't exactly synonymous, uh, but there is a lot of overlap, of course. And so it's really important for us to recognize the significance of this disease. We're going to be talking today, in particular, Dr. Samadhi is going to make mention of how we've met, had such huge advances in survival in myeloma, which is wonderful. I mean, I can argue that we've had a greater improvement in survival in myeloma than almost any cancer that we treat. Um, but unfortunately, the degree of benefit that we've seen in that improvement is not seen to the same degree within African Americans. And that's just not acceptable. That's one of the reasons why we're having this program. That's one of the reasons why we're so committed to this, is that inequity is just not acceptable to us. One of the reasons for that inequity is uh, the issue of delayed diagnosis. And so we uh, are very committed, as we're going to be discussing today, around the notion of uh, capturing a diagnosis quickly. If we look at all patients with myeloma, um, on average, independent of race or background, people see their primary care doctor three times with signs and symptoms related to myeloma, with what I'm going to be describing later, the fatigue, the back pain, the, the issues sometimes in their blood work. But the delay is even longer in African Americans for a whole host of reasons. Sometimes diabetes really confounds. You're going to see that a lot of the signs and symptoms of myeloma are similar to diabetes. And sometimes, you know, our black patients tell us, oh, yes, I was told for six months that all the things I was experiencing was just because I was diabetic. You know, that's that's why I had the anemia. That's why there was a bit of protein in my in my urine, or that's why I, I felt this fatigue when in fact it really was myeloma growing. Uh, having access, we're going to be talking a lot about access to both the diagnosis features of myeloma and the actual treatment, um, and sometimes even awareness in the primary care provider. Someone doesn't think, oh, well, this patient's too young to have myeloma. I don't need to do the testing to find if they have myeloma when in fact they do. And often access to specialists in the field, as we're going to be describing, is reduced within this community. Well, on that subject of access, sometimes I talk about the four T's. I, I talk about three of them on this slide, that the access to treatments is a massive problem. 
and the access to treatments is particularly concerning in the treatments that we know have improved survival in myeloma, which include triplets, which is we're going to be talking about three drug combinations, transplants or bone marrow transplants or stem cell transplants as we call them, and then this newest of treatments that we're going to hear briefly from Dr. Usmani about what are called CAR T cell therapies. And we've shown, sadly, that African Americans are less likely to access these three Ts and indeed the fourth T, which is clinical trials. And sometimes clinical trials seem to be very scary to individuals. There's obviously a tremendous history here. Uh, we have a lot to do uh, to re repair that history that has created a systemic uh, problem within our, our nation and within our healthcare system. Um, but we know the clinical trials can have a tremendous positive impact on patients. And sadly, we know uh, that participation in that trial is significantly less. Um, number nine uh, is that there are biological differences, and, and I don't want to get into too much detail here, but we know that um, bottom line that um, the so-called high-risk features of myeloma, because we think of myeloma, as I get explained to you, sometimes we think of it as standard and high-risk, meaning there are features that make myeloma more aggressive. It's actually less likely that African Americans have the high risk. They're more likely to have the standard risk. So you would think that outcomes, meaning survival, should be better in black patients, when, in, when indeed, sadly, we showed it was not. But I end on a positive note because we do have studies now that clearly show, and this was from a VA study where at least theoretically people are given the same access to care, that when given that same access, black patients actually do better. And that's the, that's the, the goal here. That's the recognition that the current inequity is not acceptable. It's not acceptable that there's a late diagnosis. It's not acceptable that there isn't access to care, and it's not acceptable that survival is reduced. But we know survival can be better if we do something about it, and frankly, that's why we're all here today. So what can we do about this? Well, this is what part of our discussion is going to be today, and I don't want to go into a lot of detail here apart from saying that this takes everybody. This takes um, the, the so-called lay community, what I call awareness, education, advocacy, and empowerment, which is a big part of, of course, the Empower project that we are trying to empower people to change the course of myeloma, but it also is on us as the medical community to educate people better, to develop cultural sensitivity and competence, and to gain access to these therapies. And then lastly, within the regulatory and corporate communities, that they have a responsibility as well to set the right policy, to set expectations and to be committed. And only with all stakeholders can we do this. And this is why we're doing this. We really believe as the IMF, we have an opportunity that um, is unique because of the position we have in the community. And that's why we've created M Power, which stands for myeloma power, um, saying that we want to change the course of myeloma because the current course of myeloma is not acceptable. It's not acceptable that this inequity exists. And in doing so, we're increasing awareness, we're engaging the community as we're trying to do even today, shortening that time of diagnosis and educating our providers uh, about how we can develop better care. So that's the heart of it today. That's the executive summary of why we're here and what we're seeking to do.